Hello and welcome to this vlog where I'm going to be exploring uh, Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland in order to see what kind of opportunities it holds for us landscape photographers. Dumfries and Galloway borders my home county of Cumbria and it's a place that I've visited quite a few times um, but not specifically for photography. Um, more often than not it's somewhere that I tend to be passing through as I'm travelling further north into Scotland so an area that is definitely overdue some exploration. This is the first in uh, a series of uh, vlogs where I'll be travelling extensively throughout the area to try and discover uh, some great locations and recce out spots that uh, I'll then visit on future uh, trips. For me, planning a photography trip can be a fairly broad brush uh, exercise. What I'd maybe have done in the past is uh, do lots of research online, go through all the guidebooks that I could find. And what that would have resulted in is uh, a extensive list of locations that I knew I was going to visit. Um, but it would also mean a list of shots where I probably had a very good idea of where I'd be positioned and I'd also have a pretty good idea of the composition that I was going to be looking for. In more recent years, I've tried to move away from that kind of approach uh, for a couple of reasons. First, uh, to kind of bring back a bit of joy of discovery. Um, when I moved up to Cumbria uh, in the Lake District 20 odd years ago, when I went to a spot when I was walking or I was wild camping, actually felt like you know that was the first time you'd been there and you explored and you discovered um, what I find today is that with the number of videos that uh, are available online the number of pictures that you can see from uh, any area in the United Kingdom if you expose yourself to them extensively um, when you actually go to that location it you know you've lost that uh, joy if you like of you know seeing it with um, a fresh pair of eyes and, and truly seeing it for the the first time um, the other thing that I would say the second reason I do it is because if you've got a uh, you know catalog of images that you've seen in your head what you might find, even subconsciously, is that you end up copying those, you end up producing a facsimile of somebody else's idea. So what I'm trying to do is go to an area with an open mind, not have uh, fixed ideas about what I'm going to discover and what I'm going to shoot, and hopefully um, you know, bring back a bit of joy at having uh, explored the area with a, an open mind and fresh pair of eyes. If you're open to that kind of approach um, probably the main thing that I'd recommend is getting yourself um, the OS maps of the area at different scales and really you know pour over it thoroughly look at those uh, maps and identify from there 
you know areas or particular spots that you think ah you know it might be interesting there's a feature there whether it's a castle whether it's um, uh, rock whether it's uh, a section of coastline whatever it is really go through those maps and produce a list uh, the next thing to do is just go and actually visit those places uh, that are on your list okay sounds uh, simple enough I, mean, I suppose it is um, with that kind of approach what you will find is that uh, a number of the places that you thought had potential might not when you get there prove to be uh, particularly fruitful and for me that's fine um, because I'm kind of weighing that against the fact that um, you know I might potentially discover a little gem of a spot that hasn't been photographed much if at all um, you know so there's little nuggets out there waiting to be discovered and that for me is one of the the joys of photography so yeah get the maps out have a look at potential locations go and visit them see what you can find arrived in Scotland last night um, beautiful blue skies horrible for photography um, one of the things I quite enjoy doing is not really having much of a plan uh, when I'm visiting an area that I've not done photography in before um, so the southwest of Scotland I've visited a few times um, but this is the first time that I've really visited the area to do some photography so um, I have a list of locations that I think might have some potential that I've uh, identified either through some books online or usually uh, an OS map and I don't really have a plan as such apart from visiting locations um, so today for example I'm visiting um, a place called Brighouse Bay Uh, just had a chat with the guy on the boat behind me there. Um, he's uh, stuck, uh, which was quite interesting. I thought he was going to tell me some interesting tales, but uh, some mechanical problem uh, means he's only just come from Kakubri, which is around the corner. I like to recce places on lists and kind of get a feel for them. Is the potential here? Um, you know, is this going to be something that I come back to? If I do, is it going to be a, an evening shot or a morning shot? So today, while it's nice and sunny like this, um, just touring around, going to a few locations and seeing is there some potential. An alternative approach is to, you know, go online and look at some specific images that people have taken, identify where they are and go and replicate them. And you'd probably be able to work out, you know, should I go morning or evening? Uh, is it a daytime shot? Whatever. Um, I don't do that as much anymore. I, I do like the idea of just wandering around. You know, I'm kind of on holiday as well. Uh, first time I've been back in Scotland since um, lockdown ended. So, yeah, having a wander around and just seeing what appeals. And serendipity, you might come across something and get an original shot because you haven't gone out with a plan to replicate uh, images that you've already seen. So that's the plan for today. Um, with this bright sunshine, I don't think I'll be taking much in the way of uh, proper pictures. Um, if we visit a port or something, I might do something there. But, yeah, just a recce day today. So 
so I arrived at Loose Bay in the uh, mid to late afternoon and I'd find, uh, found a nice uh, spot to pull the van up. Um, just one thing to note, with pandemic and the boom in camper vans in the UK, um, I found that even in Scotland it's actually now becoming more difficult to find suitable stops. Uh, for the evening uh, so in Dumfries and Galloway I managed to find uh, a spot every night but what I also found that I haven't seen before was lots and lots of parking areas um, where there were very specific and obvious no overnight camping signs so that's a debate for another time but um, yeah something to, to bear in mind if you are traveling in a van Anyway, the light was pretty harsh when I got there, uh, you know, so there wasn't much photography to be had. Um, but sometimes I quite like to just potter around an area, um, relax, have a little wander around and not put too much uh, pressure on myself to get images. Sometimes it's not something to, uh, you know, concern yourself with. Hello and welcome once again from uh, Galloway. Um, nothing to report on the photography front yet I'm afraid. I'd uh, just gone outside after it was raining for about 10 hours. We had a, a brief period of 10 minutes of sunshine uh, and back in the van now as the uh, lightning and hail um, has started. So. Uh, nice little spot just a few miles north of Port Patrick, which I understand was once the uh, main transit route between uh, the North of Ireland and Scotland uh, many moons ago. Um, quite a rugged coastline, um, definitely worth exploring. I'm going to hang around this spot for probably the next day or so. Uh, when it does stop raining, I'll get out and take some pictures. Well, um, a bit of sunshine. Looking at the forecast, I've got approximately an hour um, to try and get a shot. So I haven't actually, t I've been on holiday for three days now. Um, I've done some drone footage, but the light's been terrible and then past 24 hours the uh, weather's been rubbish. So I'll just have a little spin round here. Not very promising. Um, there has been some dramatic lighting, but it's also been accompanied by hailstone and lightning and stuff like that. So I've just gone back in the van and had a wee dram. Um, I'm just noticing the uh, we're almost at high tide, maybe an hour out. Just noticing the waves crashing on here. Probably have a go see if I can find just one part of this coastline here where. Uh, you know, something interesting is going to happen, but I've got an hour, so let's see.
just want to get some of these uh, waves, see if there's a, an interesting composition. Waves breaking over the rocks, classic stuff, but you know, I'm not blessed with great light, but I want to get something. I'm starting to get itchy feet now, I need to take some uh, pictures. I've got my initial composition um, dialed in. What I tend to do is go big to small when I, I'm at a scene. So by that, I mean I'll get uh, probably my first shot will be a fairly conventional uh, type of composition, fairly classical. Um, on a full frame camera, I tend to shoot 50 mil and above, just a personal preference. But in this shot, I've managed to compose the image where I've got the things I think were interesting, and that is the rocks, the sea, the house in the distance, uh, I've got the gorse, which adds a splash of colour, and the old, um, what looks like a derelict house up there. So I've got everything I need. Um, I tend not to go for wide angle shots. I really want to focus on the waves hitting the rocks. That's the kind of key thing. Um, problem I've got now is that it's extremely bright um, and even with my ISO down to 64 which is as low as I like to use on this particular camera uh, and my aperture at f16 uh, we're still talking about 1 45th of a second for this type of scene um, I quite like the waves uh, and the motion that is rendered with an exposure of about a second so what I'm going to do is stick the, uh, the filters on, uh, ND filter, and try to get down to um, around one second. So probably a three-stop filter I think will uh, do this, but we will see. Um, I might also stick the polarizer on just to try to uh, bring down some of these highlights. There's some specular highlights in parts of the waves and a polarizer might just take the edge off those uh, little highlighted areas. So excellent, three days and I've um, just taken a few shots. Uh, a little tip when you've got something like waves hitting the shore every time that happens there's going to be a slight uh, difference in how it's rendered in the scene you know no two waves are ever quite the same and you never quite get the timing right unless you're very lucky on the first shot so i've probably just taken about five or six shots um, so i've at least got something in the bag Um, but what I do need to do is be careful, uh, this tide's still coming in, the rocks are pretty slippy and um, yeah, I'm not going to go into the sea for this shot. During my time in Dumfries and Galloway, I got lots of uh, material and I'll probably be producing three to 
uh, for vlogs. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this particular vlog. Um, but just to let you know, on the next one, um, I'm going to be visiting the old fishing village of Port Patrick, uh, along with uh, a castle called Dunsky Castle, which is just outside of Port Patrick. Um, and then the uh, trip moves on to the Mull of Galloway, which is the most southerly point of Scotland, and very bonny it is too. So I hope to see you next time. Uh, take it easy. Bye for now.